you know, we can't let any of that stuff pull us down. Oh, yeah. Like, even a little bit from where it is that we're going because... Oh, I don't care anymore. I love myself. If you don't like this, <laughs> the door is right there. Ain't no... Everybody don't look like Kim Kardashian. I mean... Kim just, Kardashian don't look like Kim Kardashian. Right. Because <laughs> here's the thing. We can't be any... We can't be like them either and base their value to us in a relationship to their sex because, baby, I done been sucked, flipped... I done had it all done to me by somebody I couldn't even get a loaf of bread from after. You know, <laughs> look, you know what Alberta said. You know what my grandma said. She said, baby, you can get dick when you can't even get a loaf of bread. So it's like, <laughs> you know, listen, there is a certain sector of white women that have always been reserved for being nigga traps. Mm. But, but that's what it is because if you can give a black man some money, a pork chop sandwich, and some white women, you can compromise him. He'll sell you his. Welcome, Wi-Fi's, to another episode of The Wireless Woman. Today, I am being joined by my own natural cousin, Rakosha. Hello. <laughs> it's so good to have you. Thank you. So, Wi-Fi's, do me a favor, though, on your way in and like this video. You already know why, because when you like it, well, I love it. Today, we are going to be talking about body image, mm -hmm. the black woman and body image. And I'm so glad to have one of my own family members here to, to really just kind of unpack it. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. Well, born and raised in Charlotte, attended uh, Winston-Salem State. Um, I like to travel. I like to read. I'm trying to indulge in the cooking area, but <laughs> <laughs> well, there are not too many native Charlatans here anymore. So, so I've heard. Yeah. So you know, we gonna go ahead and, and rep rep our city. Yes. Rep yes. for those Charlotte girls. And I also heard you say that you are also an HBCU alum. I am. I am. I'm not even going to get on them rants today, but, <laughs> but yeah, I think too, being, um, you know, HBCU alumni, it really does change the nature of the conversations. Yes. So, you know, as far as like black women are concerned, I really feel like us being educated has really flipped the script on so many of the dynamics in black male black female relationships you know mm -hmm. so i'm glad to have a fellow hbcu alumni and an educated black woman to discuss these issues and these topics with okay well thank you Devian, the wireless woman thank you for inviting me to speak with you today um really i just wanted to talk about normalizing being natural because i do feel like Social media is putting so much pressure on women, particularly African-American women have big butts and 27 inch waist and they're dying out here to attain that. And it's, yeah. it's really ridiculous. Like, just be happy with what God gave you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think for me, it's such a poignant subject because, you know, we have what I feel like are some of the most beautiful women in our family, like for real. Right. I remember my, you know, I remember my sister husband, Tony, and he was like, I tell any man, if you can get you a Greer woman, you got a good woman right there. Yes, you know, yes. and we're all, and we, we have such a hen house, but we're all different shapes, different shades, different Absolutely. heights, you know, and the same culture, like in our mindset. And we're just really good quality 
women, it's tough to think, it's tough for me to think of being in competition with women Mm -hmm. because of how Mm -hmm. we were raised. You know, we got tons of cousins and we come together, we cook together, you know, we dish together. And so it's, it's a real weird space when I stepped outside of the family, you know, going to college and like you said, social media and seeing how thick this competition is. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. It's just ridiculous. Like when I just on my own Instagram, and I'm just what's that little um, the little search tool thing, and it'll link you to other videos, and it's it's ridiculous. Like constantly, like a woman with a huge butt, and it, I'm like, you look crazy though, because they don't they don't know how to like make it look normal. They're like animated with it to a point and i'm just like it's not that serious because you getting this big old butt but i don't see a man on your shoulder i don't like where is he at like who are you doing this for now i'm not i'm not against nip and tuck if you want to enhance a little bit like if you flat chested maybe one breast or maybe never had butt maybe i want a little lift back there but i just want women to be natural yeah and see i actually am against a little bit of nip and tuck oh really yeah because i feel like a lot of those women are doing that at a young age yes and baby what's nipping today don't be tucking tomorrow you know what i mean (laughs) like i've seen women get that and if you don't have a certain amount of muscle definition if you're not going to work out now you got these baggy boobs you got this saggy ass and it just doesn't make any sense why you went and did that to yourself because and this is what i'll say and and i'm gonna go back to our family when i say that Mm -hmm. naturally (laughs) as a woman some things go spread out some things go kind of fall into place (laughs) and so i get concerned about women who are young in their mindset and in their experience thinking that this is a measure of womanhood because in our family the one thing that I've always appreciated about the women in our family is that they're natural yes. beauties. Um, we've never really had anybody in our family that underwent any kind of surgery. Not like that, that I know of, yeah. Yeah, no. But these are women that I can honestly say that like my sister, your grandma, your mom, you know, these are women that I have seen take care of people, cook some yeah. of the best food anybody ever had they just have so much value that it's hard to think of their value being reduced down to like you said dress sizes and measurements exactly and i feel like particularly girls maybe in my age between me and you they feel like their value is there like how big their butt is um, you know and i want to go into this Mm -hmm. and what you think about this okay i think that because i have a daughter that's biracial right okay and she's hispanic we're shaped totally different right like i think certain things are it's what they call a west african body type me and you got West African bodies. Okay. You know, when you get across the ocean, yes. you know, being a big belly Buddha, you know, it, it's it's a sign of wealth. It's mm, a sign okay, of yeah. prosperity yeah. when you're a healthy woman yes. like that. They looking at her like, I know she can cook some ham hocks, you know. Speaking of your daughter, what were you? what's her figure type? Because Hispanic women are shaped a little a little different. Yeah, very. she's very pear-shaped. You know? Yes, She's yes, yes, very yes. slender in the shoulders. She mm-hmm. didn't get these linebacker shoulders, baby. She didn't get all this back that I got, but she's very wide in the hips. And she's just shaped very differently for me. And I think yeah. that has to do with genetics. Oh, yeah. But my issue is that I think a lot of black men, because they're dating out now, Yes. yes. <laughs> right. They're starting, to, they're starting to compare us yes. with other people who are naturally, you know, who naturally have a certain body type. And even those women, mm-hmm. once they start to get 40, 45 and have babies, aren't going to look like that either. I don't know. Like, for, when I was younger, like, for many, many years, I didn't think I had a figure. Like, I just thought I was the fattest thing on earth. And I, went, I was like... 
150 like i wish i was 150 now yes yeah yeah yeah. and you really have to love yourself you know i was totally different i was straight up and down (laughs) baby the only curve i had on me was my knees that's that's about the roundest thing i had on me was elbows and knees yeah and you know i think all the way up to i graduated high school i was still in the 90s you know, I don't oh, think I got okay, up to got about you. 120 until I was pregnant with my first child. And it, gotcha. that's why I said it goes to show as a woman, you're hormonally going to go through so many changes anyway. Absolutely. So it's like, why pressure yourself at this young age to fit these body, you know, this this body dysmorphia, really? Yep. Because a lot of these women are putting slimming filters on their pictures. Hmm. I do yeah. not even know Yeah, that. you can do a slimming filter, baby. Oh, I need that one. Or then. if you're like me, what I do is I go to the gym and I take pictures in the gym mirrors <laughs> because the gym mirrors have a certain polarity that makes you look a little slimmer. Yeah, those high-powered mirrors, mm. they, like, they put them in really upscale shops. That's why okay, you yep, buy yep. something in the store <laughs> that look good on you. And then you get home and be like, what is this? And it's the difference between the mirrors. Wow, you learn something new every day. I did not know that. Well, then why does the mirrors in JCPenney make you look like shit? And you don't want to <laughs> buy. <laughs> because, and you know who taught me this? Quentin did. Okay. Because the mirrors are expensive. Expensive, and so those cheaper mirrors okay. and those department stores cost less to buy and put up. Okay. So they'll they'll make you look a little bit. It's like funhouse mirrors. Mm-hmm. They'll stretch you or they'll pull you out a little bit. So yeah, because trust me, I was in belt the other day. Like <laughs> I know I ain't got all this ass. Right. I know, this is this is doing too much, too much. But let me ask you a question. Okay. Do you feel like do you feel that body image is a much bigger issue in a black community? Like, I don't know what your experiences are with women of other cultures, but do you feel like it's... I, I Yes, I would say in the black community because speaking of Hispanic women, like some, they can be as big as refrigerators and their men love them worship the ground they work walk on yeah. i feel like black men criticize black women's bodies a little bit more than other cultures i would say yeah i mean and that goes back to the conversation about you know some of these manosphere men and kevin samuels their main complaint about black women other than our attitudes <laughs> is body types and, and body shapes and it's like i said i know what did you, they say you don't know i i don't i don't entertain foolery like that because for a black man to sit there because I, I when i heard about him dying i didn't know who he was but they said like he's the worst guy ever all he did was criticize black women so i don't have respect for a black man that does that anyway yeah so I didn't even want to entertain and watch yeah. those videos. But I feel like it's it's kind of commonplace because, and we can speak to this particularly, is even when you take out the manosphere and what's happening on social media, because mm-hmm. that's a huge component of what everyone thinks about who we are as black people and black women. Mm-hmm. Even if you take that out, we have seen and we know firsthand how abusive, disrespectful, and dishonoring that black men have been to their own black women just period there's no way you could treat someone that you esteem in that way and like i said it goes back to you being a fat black bitch you know it goes back to how dark you are what body size that you have and all of those things as being a measure of womanhood and for me i'm like all right we doing all that i mean we gotta start talking about dick size we gotta start talking about how dark your skin is and how nappy your hair is so i feel like it's just something that seems to be pointed at the black woman absolutely absolutely and it's not fair because we already have so much on our shoulders anyway and it's like oh now we gotta keep up with our body on top of working a nine to five and you know the women who do have children because i don't have children but i can only imagine going to work raising children and then on top of that you're trying to make sure you're a certain size to please your men or whatever but i just say to women just love yourself because it took me so many years to love 
my body. Yeah, where you were at. And where I'm at, yeah. Because I'm 32 now. I didn't start loving my body till I was 30. That was yeah. two years ago. So yeah. 30 yeah. years to love myself. And now that I look back, I'm like, I actually did have a figure. I actually was smaller. Because I, I just, I don't know, I just felt like I was a butter ball. I don't know. I just... And it didn't really help either because I went to a white school. So you got, you know, little Becky's running around 100 pounds and I'm 140. And I'm like, dang, I'm 40. I'm, huge, yeah. I'm 40 pounds bigger than her. But now that I'm older, I'm black. My body type is not. Totally different. You know, exactly. It's not yeah. Sarah's body. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. That's why I just, I really wanted to talk about this. Right, but I do think, too, you have to take into consideration our conditions because we're coming True. genetically through lines of women who were not able to take care of themselves, take care of their bodies, to prioritize self-care, to have healthy self-images. We have a lot of... Um, like I said, body image that's passed down through the lines because when you True. go back and you look at older slave women, a lot of them weren't 125. You know what I mean? Right. We, we eat and process food totally different than white people do living in this country. The yes. types of diets, Mediterranean, African diets that lend themselves to black women being their healthiest are not mm -hmm. readily available mm -hmm. here. We were in the Burger King in Puerto Rico and they had salads and green smoothies. Oh, wow. They had like green juice in the <laughs> Burger King. <laughs> right. In Puerto Rico. So do you feel like America is tr like, well, yeah, America does have a terrible diet compared to other places. It's not just us. They try to act like it's disproportionately black women. But let's be mm -hmm. real. Black women only make up 6% of this nation's population. Mm -hmm. We're outnumbered by the women of every other race in America. And here's the thing. Other than Ling Ling, other than Asian women, they, <laughs> they tend to be small and stay small that way. Yes. It's plenty of big women. Like I feel like it is weaponized when it comes to black women yeah. but we're definitely not the biggest women and let's be honest gotcha. even if, even when we are i just feel like we carry it better yes like, yes I, we definitely do if i'm biased <laughs> if i'm biased no you're not i mean it's just the truth yeah and i think we i think we age well we're gonna outlive our men anyway um, more often than not. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's sad that the value, like I said, of what a woman contributes to her family, her community, her culture is being reduced down to to that. So yeah. let me ask you about that. You feel like growing up in a white school mm -hmm. impacted your your thoughts of body image? A uh, reason I'm let me qualify the question. No, no, no. Uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like it's a community issue. So you saying it that way makes me feel like did were white people giving you like grief for being a certain size? No, no, not at all, not at all. But it did, and even the black girls who went to my school, but it did kind of impact my image just a little bit because, like I said, all the other girls, particularly white girls, because mm -hmm. when I was at you know my high school. I think we like 10% black. It was a low amount of black kids. But, you know, me being 140 at the time or 145 and the girl next to me is 100 pounds. It's like, dang, like, why am I 40? We're in the same gym class. Mm -hmm. We're eating the same school food. Why am I 40 pounds more mm -hmm. than her? So it was you like know? more of a comparison. Right. In your own mind. Right. Okay. And see, I think, too, you have to take into consideration cortisol levels. You know, black yeah. women tend to be under so much more stress than women of other communities. That's and see, true. it took me getting older to even understand true. where some of that was coming from. Yep. We're raised, by and large, by single mothers. You know, dealing with, uh, you know, having to cook or eat a certain way because yep. of economics. And Absolutely. unfortunately, we as black women live in a community that doesn't have the same amount of resources. Our men yes. have not built 
the pyramids and giving them to <laughs> us as they used to. So yes. now we're in a phase as women where most of us, especially coming out of those single parent households, are starting from the bottom, <laughs> getting it out of the mud. You don't have the time. You don't have... You know, we don't have our community built. We don't have yeah. these trust funds. We don't have generational wealth Absolutely. coming down to us. So you got all this cortisol in your blood that's keeping your, your weight up. Because you remember, I think it was last year before last. Okay. You remember I was 145. Yeah. Baby, you remember how skinny I got? Yes, yes, yes. And I was so stressed, oddly enough, that... It was causing me to lose weight like that. You know, mm, just going yeah. through the separation and the divorce. I was so stressed out. I think I dropped 40 pounds in like four months. Oh, wow. So it goes to show, though, how much your psychological state. Yes. Your physiological state, your emotional state is wrapped up in those fluctuations. And I think it's really unfair for men to solely base a woman, a woman's body on their desirability to her. Because mm -hmm. I mean, shoot, we, we bloat, we, you know, we, yes. we go up and down, like you said, hormonally through years, just developmental ages. A yes. 40 year old woman's body has more test testosterone. Like I was going to tell you that, hang mm -hmm. on in there as you get older. <laughs> You start to just naturally burn off, you know, a, a whole lot more fat, especially, yeah. <laughs> especially if you like are getting towards your retirement years and you can be more active. True. You'll True. you'll see a big payoff with it. So you're saying as you get older, you will start to lose more weight. Yeah, because your testosterone levels will rise. What happens is men's testosterone level goes down. Okay. So they start getting soft and get them them titties and all that <laughs> wide ass that they that they um they, see I think they be right. jealous to be quite honest <laughs> they they want to be a bad bitch no but they right. start getting all them hips and and boobs and stuff that we used to have and then our testosterone levels start to go up that's why you'll see mm. women who are getting a little bit older like I said unless they have just kind of always carried a lot of weight right if as you get older you can start to go to the gym and do those things you're seeing a lot of those 70 80 year old black female yep. bodybuilders now yep. and that's the reason why because you're you're really at the body composition around about 50 55 years old okay. to be to be in the best shape of your life i did not know that and i'm glad to yeah. hear that yeah still so, got 20 years but yeah so I'm a, <laughs> but it's good to know that good you're going uphill and you got something yes, to look forward to exactly that's why i said fuck them haters because they're gonna be the drop dead just like kevin samuels at 57 and you're gonna be living your best life <music> let's just be honest we as women are not putting up with men's shit no more and, and exactly. the sad part about exactly. it is i know they crying tears in their beers about that but <laughs> <laughs> but we never should have put up with it you know what i'm saying yes. we never should have had to take the violence the disrespect the dishonor the cheating the stds the disregard and the fact that they feel like the days and times when women were forced into that type of oppressive subjection was the best of times is proof that they are white supremacists they are oppressive wanting to be slave owners mm. that's why and i know i'm on a rant but just let me cook let me cook let me cook So segueing into like a, a different area of this conversation, okay. I'm going to talk about the sex lives of, of fat black women <laughs> because I feel like a lot of people are touting us as being undesirable, but baby, that just ain't, <laughs> that just ain't the Don't the believe truth. the hype. You know, and, and I think too, a lot of people will say it like, oh, you know, men will Men will sleep with anybody, and they will. Anybody and anything, evidently. Mm, evidently. evidently. Yes. But, <laughs> but the fact that our men, black men, because I know you're a little bit more race loyal than I am. I used to be. I used to <laughs> be. <laughs> we done opened up the boys. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Nice. You got to. You yeah. got to. Yeah. But I think that, you know, our men have made these things a desirability issue. But the truth of the matter is they're not marrying anybody. So it's nothing for a black woman to be ashamed of. You know, even the people that they are marrying. Yeah. They're getting the same. They're they're getting the same man oh, yeah. that we're getting. Oh, yeah. You know, Absolutely. at the end of the day, our higher value black men, mm-hmm. you know, they go and nest and slum in other people's communities and that'll be, you know, up to them and their choice if that's what they want to do cuz at the end of the day, it's coming down to white skin. I had mm. a guy say to me, um, he was from up north and he was like, yeah, because when I came down south, mm-hmm. you know, the white girls thick down here, too. And I was like, mm-hmm. is it impressive because they're thick or is it impressive because they're white? Mm. And he was like, well, well, I'm just saying like the women where I came from, they was like real skinny, you know, but the southern and see that goes back to diet, what you were talking about. Mm -hmm. He was saying, but see the southern white women, they're thick. I'm like, okay, so when you're white and you're thick, that's impressive. But when you're black and you're thick, it's not. And I told him, I Mm. said, just if you want white skin, just say that. (laughs) Because you want a black female body type. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, even when we talk about these women, the reason why they got a 27 inch waist and a, you know, 38 inch booty is because they went and got their booty enhanced and they was already skinny women. But my point is, if it's really, if that's really what's desirable to you, then clearly this has to be about white skin if you want white girls that are shaped like black women. Right, right. Ain't no everybody don't look like Kim Kardashian. I mean, Kim just, Kardashian don't look like Kim Kardashian. Right. Uh, when she first came on the scene, like in 08, that was her right. butt. That, that might have been her, but I don't think so. Right. I, I'll never buy it. I'll never buy it. I'll never buy it. I'll never buy it. I will never buy it. But you got to also understand that Kim Kardashian was trying to be attractive for black men. That's true. That's because if true. she was not trying to attract that's black true. men, now that she's not, she took them out. You know what I'm saying, do you think that's why she took her butt out? She took her butt out to be attractive to non-black men because mm. the thing is black men treat non-black women better. Yes. In the dating and mm-hmm. getting them over to their community phase, mm. but once you marry you still got to deal with the black male pathology. You still got to deal with that. And so now that Kim realizes it's not the man, okay, you had Reggie Bush, you had Kanye West, you had, it's not the man, it's the culture. Yes. You know, it's coming out of the culture. Like you literally sit beside black men who will listen for four straight hours to music that glorifies drug culture, Mm -hmm. demeans the black woman. Because you got to think, a woman like me, is the same Sir Mix a lot. I like big butts, and I cannot lie. Woman from 1990s to now, it's like you vilifying that mm-hmm. same thing in black women when that's what y'all have been putting in your videos. Well, to piggyback on what you were saying, you know, that's like you could tell it's like something psychological because you come from a black woman, you want a black woman shape, but in lighter skin. What? Like you know how like white people tan, get bigger lips, bigger butt. Y'all want to have you know traits of us, but don't want to be us. So it's kind of going back to that. They want the woman to be shaped black, but they yeah. don't want the but, black woman. But see that everybody want to be black, but don't nobody want to be a nigga. Uh. That's where I get thrown off because right? the black man wants the white man's woman and they say that they want these women because it's sticking it to the man like it's proving some point to the white man but if you want to get white women to stick it to white men get the white women that white men want because see white (laughs) men don't want white women that shape like black women because if because any white man and i know because you Mm -hmm. know i be out here in them yeah in them swirly waters okay and any white man okay. that likes that body type okay. will go get a black woman. Baby, they don't want no Diet Coke. <laughs> Just give me the Coke. Okay. That's true. Honestly, the, the white men and men of other cultures 
that like that body type are not seeking it in white skin. They already recognize mm. that the women of their community are not going to naturally, you know, that it yeah. takes that type of augmentation. And they actually prefer for a woman to naturally just be what she is. That's why you see Gabby Sidibe. Yes, yes. And her white husband. But she's been losing weight, though. So She has been losing weight, but that's just getting healthy. Okay. Okay. It's just like with me, the healthiest version of me, I had to put the weight back on for that. Okay. You know, I was going through a severe depression. Baby, y'all didn't even know. I was headed up out of here. I was wasting. It's what the old <laughs> folks would call wasting. Oh, no. You know, and yeah. when I, my, I didn't know I was having thyroid issues. Okay. And once they got my hormones balanced back out to what they naturally should be, yeah. baby, that weight came right back. I was like... Damn, do I be sick and skinny? Right, right. <laughs> you know, and it just goes to show we all have a, a natural equilibrium. Now, if I wanted to go from here and lose weight, work out, you know, yeah. make some definitely can make some changes to my diet, but my equal but I would be working against my equilibrium homeostasis mm -hmm. right. I would be cutting like this. You yeah. know what I mean? And I would have to be doing a whole lot to go up from here. You know, women in our family, even though okay. we shapely, we not big. Like, we don't have no three, four hundred pound True. women in our family like that. Because I think some people think people are working hard to be fat. Like, I think that's the problem. I think people think it's hard work to be fat. It's I'm not. Just, I know I'm not working hard to be fat. I'm doing everything <laughs> opposite not to. <laughs> yeah, but that's my point. I know tons of women who don't look like you know they're they're eating salads they're eating healthy they're mm -hmm. they're doing smoothies they're taking the stairs when they go to work they're you know working out two or three times a week and they still look like us you know yep. so that's why i'm saying it's just about being healthy like if, if gabby sidibe is getting healthy and it's causing her to lose weight and that's that's my main focus now. Like I'm, I don't have to be skinny. I don't want to be a size five or whatever. I'm just trying to be a healthier version of myself because I do like my curves. But just you know, maintain it, keep it honed in. In my experience, and I'm I'm pretty sure that there would be men that would say that I'm wrong like hell because <laughs> you know they just oppositionally defying at this point you could say the sky was blue and they would say you was wrong but i think a lot of men and this is this is what they tell me you know they want black women they want to be with black women it's just yeah. not the fashionable thing i guess you know i think a well, lot of trying them, to impress it, that's what i'm about to say it's like middle school peer pressure or something with them because let's be honest, the most impressive women don't necessarily make them the best women for you. And that's why I think so or many of them. Or the best wife or best partner or. Best friend. The one that's going to be there to the end like Chucky. <laughs> you know, I think that's why so many of them are so angry and bitter and taking it out on black women. Mm -hmm. Is because, because you know, um, some guy was saying this. He was talking about how. Y'all women don't want a good man. Y'all don't want a man that's got this. And you don't want a man. No, 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 no. The problem is the women that you want don't want you. Yeah. I hate when they say that I can't find a good woman. No, when you have the good woman, you mm -hmm. don't recognize it. Well, it goes back so. to the, the topic of this conversation, which is good women come in different shapes, sizes, complexions, colors, heights, education levels is you know Absolutely. you if you really as a man i think social media has cast the net so wide that everyone mm -hmm. thinks they can custom make their person perfect person True. instead of finding people where they are that speak to mm -hmm. you know um who that particular man is because so many men are out of focus and out of touch with their own goals yes like i'll give you an example i mm -hmm. am a woman who wants to travel Yes, yes. So I want to date a man who has a passport. If you are a felon and you can't get your ass into no foreign country, <laughs> yeah. if you are on one of them lists where you can't yeah. go nowhere, well, you are not the man for me. Now, you might be 6'6 six, six with a six pack making six figures. Mm. But you are not the man mm -hmm. for me. Absolutely. And I think that so often we as women, 
I think we as women are going to have to turn the dial back and the tide on that and stop just making every attractive man or every BDE man think that he could be the man for us because I am literally meeting men that are like well you know you you could be but I don't and I'm thinking the whole time I am so not interested in you. It's weird that you was even assessing me as a partner because clearly nothing on this date, me me being able to speak above a sixth grade level didn't seem to resonate with you that we weren't a match. Right. Like, I was getting ready to leave here and never speak to you again. But thank you for letting me know. And that's why I said I think a lot of it is their own insecurity about trying to pull women down that they feel like are out of their league just so that they can get a woman that would impress some other dude but really can't do nothing for their life. Because, baby, if you going to be with me and you ain't got nothing, you got to pay me. And they'll sit back and say, y'all women, y'all don't go. Or that I'm not supposed to feel like that because of how I look. But you ugly and want to be with a fine woman. Hello. Hello. You poor and want to be with a good woman. And I'm sorry, nobody is going to spend the twilight years of their life with you changing your pampers and keeping you out of a nursing home for free. Absolutely. <laughs> for free. You got to be leaving me some money, some security. Take care of, yeah, take, take it's care security. of me. Yes. Yeah, right. it's security. If Absolutely. you're expecting me to be there and take care of you. And the thing about most of us black women is we making all our own money anyway. Yeah. yeah. You know, this is the perfect opportunity for us to link up with men who have money and lead generational wealth. But if you yeah. at least not bringing that to the table, you're going to have to treat me like somebody. Yes. And, and and some of these men may have to take a woman that's 200 pounds, may have to take a woman that's older, may have to take all these things that they tell us as women. If you're over 35, you ain't got no value. And that's where most of us learned how to cook. If, you, yeah. <laughs> if you're over 200 yeah. pounds, you ain't got no value. But what they don't tell you is about all that warm, soft, tight. Pussy that's underneath that fupa. <laughs> Man, that fupa exactly. is fire. Every, listen, I grew up a skinny girl, so I know the difference between the sex I have now yes, versus yes. the sex I had back then. And when you're yes. a woman, when you're a full figured woman and you feel soft and cushy and squishy and beautiful, you know, it's absolutely it's once you learn to love yourself and your body type. The sex is better because in my 20s, I was like, oh, my God, he's going to look at my stomach. I feel fat. And yeah, yeah now, mm, now that I, you know, love my body, I'm in tune with my body. And I'm going to tell yes. you something. And I said it to one of my other cousins, too. You ain't seen nothing yet. Baby, mm, you just okay. seen <laughs> nothing yet. Okay. okay. Yes. Thirty-three. Like mm-hmm. everything up with like thirty-three, four, five, six, seven. Because like I was telling you about that that testosterone surge. Okay. You go through what men go through in that like between nineteen and twenty-one. Okay. A lot of women go through that somewhere between thirty-five and forty. Sometimes mm. it gets into forty year into the forties and things like that. Cause you a I, sexual peak, right? Yeah. But see. Mm. Yeah, it's. I mean, I'm serious. You be hot as a teenage boy. You can barely Ooh. even focus. You be like. That's why a lot of younger guys like older women. I started to feel the heat, like the pressure. The, yes, I yes. started to feel it turning up and cooking <laughs> yeah. around about 33. Like that's me in August. But see, that's not good for me because I don't have anyone to roll over but see, and do that. But see, I'm getting ready to do an episode that I call D&D. Because okay. I know we think that we got to be married to these men. And don't get me wrong, I'm a traditionalist. I've been married twice, so clearly I think that. No, I'm not talking about being married. I'm just saying I can't, I I can't be that horny because I don't have anyone. I know what you mean. I, can, I yeah. know what you mean. But what I'm saying is... We gonna have to take these men for for what they D and D dick and dates. That's it. Amen. That's it. Amen. And see, a lot of what is turning them off. A lot of the reason why, like you said, we can't have that and get to that is the fact that 
is the fact that we do want that traditional you know that yeah. traditionalness we want to feel like we're respected we want to feel like you know we're working towards a relationship with these men we want to feel like you know we're not just a booty call but baby I'm here to tell you that even if you marry them you're still just a fucking booty call <laughs> you might as well get <laughs> what they given because you ain't you, you be in the house with them and they don't be paying no bills and then be trying to be stingy with some dick too it's it's gotten to the point where it's so easy for them to get that they don't place any value on it anymore you know mm -hmm. and that's why like i said i think we as women just have to take the reins on that it's a delicate balance you gonna pay you gonna respect me absolutely you gonna wear this condom Absolutely. You got, you know, we have to have standards for how we are. But as far as believing that even crossing the finish line with these bastards is going to keep you out of a nursing home when you old is, is a high ambition. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. black men just don't place a premium on relationships and marriage. Most of them are not going to drag their dusty, raggedy, wrinkly ass balls in out the street until long after the porch lights and street lights and everything mm -hmm. that came on. Yeah. So, you know, unfortunately, us as black women and I can say that because some of my aunts have gotten married but it's been older in like 50 and 60 girl mm -hmm. you better get all this dick before it stop working that's what she said no I'm telling you that but they oh, right. to the point now where they'd rather be sitting by themselves or with each other yeah oh my god your mom just said that yeah your yeah mom a lot of them like to be with each other nowadays yeah but I just think it's about having standards and just dating a higher quality man. Oh, yeah. I do think true, that's true. the slum bucket bottom. And I think a lot of women are starting to level up. And yes. we're going to have to really, really just raise our consciousness. Yeah. You know, like even when you were talking about, you know, when we're on here today to talk about body image and, you know, we can't let any of that stuff pull us down. Oh, yeah. Like, even a little bit from where it is that we're going because... Oh, I don't care anymore. I love myself. If you don't like this, <laughs> the door is right there. Like, if you... Look, I'm trying to keep it, you know. Yeah. But if you don't like it, if you got a problem with it... Exactly. But I do think we also have to... Put those messages out there. Put images of confident women yes, yes. owning their bodies yes. out there. You know, because I see so many negative caricatures of women who just have that natural body feeling bad about themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we, we get into these degrees. We get into this property ownership. We're getting to a lot of things. We ain't deterred. <laughs> See, here's the thing: we can't be any, we can't be like them either, and base their value to us in a relationship to their sex. Cause baby, I done been sucked, flipped, I done had it all done to me by somebody I can't even get a loaf of bread from after. You know, <laughs> look, you know what Alberta said. You know what my grandma said. She said, "Baby, you can get dick when you can't even get a loaf of bread." So it's like, <laughs> you know, we place this really high premium on you know the sex of these men. Some of it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of it's all right, but baby, I got people asking me if they was the best, and no, no, you were not. <laughs> I mean, I'm the best, but you know. All right, thank you for sticking around until the very end of this episode. If you liked this content, then you may want to check out this video right here. And if you haven't already, for whatever insane reason, go ahead and subscribe to my channel by clicking this link right here. Until the next time, be unplugged, unbothered, and unleashed.